Criminals and scammers are exploiting the COVID-19 pandemic for profit. Yeah, it's true. Neil Walsh runs cybercrime for the United Nations Office and Drugs and Crime. He is here to tell us exactly how scammers and criminals are exploiting this crisis for their own benefit. So, Neil, what happens if this weaponized misinformation or disinformation is used in a situation like coronavirus? What are you seeing right now? Hi, Dan. Thanks for your time today. It's a great question. And the challenges that we see across the UN, but we're seeing around law enforcement as well, is that the sheer spread of misinformation, so unintentional wrong information, and disinformation, which is intentionally wrong, creates the opportunities for criminals and for others who might want to seek to influence a news cycle, seek to influence peace and security around the world, and seek to influence how our economies recover whenever they recover from the coronavirus. What we have to understand is that criminals will always take opportunities to exploit at any point that they can. So if they can plant that seed, or they take that seed from someone with a mass amount of popularity and viewers, the ability to spread information, to spread distrust and mistrust is phenomenal. Now, what do you say to the skeptics? I think it's going to be really hard to convince skeptics. That's always the challenge, right? If I already don't believe what I'm hearing, what's going to make me change my opinion on that? And that's where I think all of us, whether we believe that this could be a thing or not, we have to really raise our index of suspicion when we read things, be it online, be it in the press, be it on a WhatsApp group, Telegram, wherever we get our information. And what we're seeing is because we're social distancing, most of us are sitting at home now, we've kind of let our guard down a bit. If I stopped you in the street outside CBS headquarters in New York and said, hey man, I've got a couple of pills here, they're gonna cure you of a thing, do you wanna buy them? You'd probably say no. But we're seeing lots of people around the world getting offers like this online to buy things to try and treat a virus that are unproven, that may be fake, the medicines themselves may be fake, and taking enormous risk. So we all have to take a step back. We have to look at the information that we're presented with, We've got to look at where it comes from and make decisions that help ultimately to keep us safe. When I use a term, or not just I, but uh, anyone uses this amorphous term, bad actor, to describe uh, bad actors, uh, it feels a, a little general and vague. Neil, give me a specific example of uh, somebody using the coronavirus to perpetrate these scams or hacks or, or even geopolitical uh, targeting? Sure. So it can be a number of different ways that someone can commit some element of cybercrime on, on the internet. It can be in the normal open internet that we all look at, or it could be on the dark net, that encrypted part of the internet where a lot of criminality takes place. I could be offering for sale on a website or on a darknet market, alcohol, hand sanitizer, face masks, you name it. And if I don't have that, then my ability to defraud you, to get money, get profit, and then deliver nothing is enormous. And we're seeing that happen and growing day on day. We, through my bit of the business in the UN, we've helped three countries to disrupt a bad actor on the internet who was claiming to sell antiviral masks from one country to another who were being incredibly badly hit by the virus and making an enormous profit for it. Once again, no real masks there and a massive financial fraud, but with real human impact. If you want to take it to a higher level, we can see where states are weaponizing this as well. We have seen evidence of states who have planted malicious software, so software to help them conduct espionage, to spy, and making it look like a virus update, a coronavirus update, being sent from one part of a government to the other. But actually embedded within that is software that takes over computers, takes computers to ransom. We've even seen criminals, cyber criminals, sending ransomware, uh, software that encrypts computers, encrypts CT and MRI scanners, targeting hospitals, targeting vaccine development labs for profit, which I can't really think of anything more inhumane and frankly stupid at this point in time. You enforce solutions. What type of solutions how how are you solving these problems right now so we're not a law enforcement body we're purely diplomatic but what we do do is that we guide we advise cops prosecutors and judges around the world and how to implement 
all of these sorts of investigations and the ability to counter this sort of work. The bit that's really worrying me and colleagues around the UN right now is as the virus strikes, as it has more and more impact around the world, those cops and prosecutors that we would normally be going to are either involved in quarantine enforcement duties or they're getting sick themselves. And it seems to me that we've got a real risk of a perfect storm of criminality here where policing capability drops off and criminal capability rises and there's a real gap in the ability to do something about that because we're all focused on trying to stay healthy.